Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Shifting the Aggregate Demand Curve In this video we will look at the key macroeconomic identity of aggregate demand and aggregate demand in the economy is made up of the total quantity of goods and services demanded at any given price. So this is the overall macroeconomic viewpoint of demand in the economy. It's made up of a number of different components and these include consumption from households, investment from firms, government spending, exports and minus imports to give us this net exports idea. So in an identity and in shorthand we can say it's AD, aggregate demand, is equal to C plus I plus G plus X minus M minus the imports there. And again the X minus M will give us this concept of net exports, uh, exports after imports are taken away. Now just a few definitions on these. So C represents consumption which is spending by households on goods and services with the exception of purchases of new housing. So new housing actually goes into the second component. So in here in the second one, investment is spending on capital equipment, inventories and structures, including household purchase of new housing. So new housing goes into investment. This is not in anything secondhand. Government spending then is spending on goods and services by local and national governments, but does not include transfer payments such as unemployment benefit, care allowance, etc., which are not seen as productive uh, expenditures. And finally, net exports looks at spending on domestically produced goods and services by foreigners, which is exports, minus spending on foreign goods by domestic residents, which is imports. So all five components make up aggregate demand here. And what we're going to look at now is how they come together on a curve. So we have the price level up on the y-axis, we have GDP down on the x-axis, and this downward sloping line you see refers to the aggregate demand curve. And that shows a negative relationship between price and GDP. This curve can shift rightwards as indicated to AD1. And this would indicate an increase in aggregate demand at every price level. Or the curve can shift leftwards, which would indicate, indicate a decrease in aggregate demand, again, at every price level. So what we want to look at now is what would be the drivers of these right and leftward shifts. So we'll start with the rightward shift of aggregate demand. And what we'll see here is there's five key drivers of this based on the components of aggregate demand we looked at previously. So the first one up is consumption. And if consumption increases in the macro economy, what will happen is a rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve when we look at it on a diagram. This can happen for a number of reasons, one of which would be that consumers have more money, maybe the wage level has gone up for these consumers, and therefore they can spend more on goods and services. The second example would be that consumers become more optimistic about the future, maybe their house prices are rising and maybe they can borrow based on this, and expenditure would increase in this case. Or finally, in terms of taxes, maybe the, there's a decrease in the income tax, giving consumers more take-home income, in which case they may decide to spend more. So all of these will cause a rightward shift in aggregate demand. Next up is investment, and if investment increases, demand shifts to the right. Again, this can happen for a number of different reasons. The first of which is perhaps spending on research and development. So companies want to get a competitive advantage or a cutting edge. Maybe there's a subsidy for this as well. And if R&D expenditure goes up, this will shift AD to the right. Maybe there's a reduction in corporation tax on the tax on their profits, in which case these companies can afford to invest more of their money back in. And maybe they're just more optimistic about the future. Maybe business con confidence and business sentiment is up, in which case businesses may decide to invest more in capital equipment. The next 
Uh, concept that can fit, uh, shift aggregate demand curve right is government spending. And this spending could increase, for example, if governments are borrowing to spend on a new motorway or on a new hospital. We call this expansionary fiscal policy. And this expansionary fiscal policy shifts the AD curve over to the right. Of course, this could also happen for other reasons, such as tax reducing, as we've mentioned previously, for consumption and investment. And finally, what would cause the aggregate demand curve to shift right is if net exports increased. What this would mean is that your country is perhaps becoming more competitive. Maybe their, the cost of doing business has decreased here, in which case, due to more competitive advantage, you're exporting more goods, your exports increase. If your imports stay quite small and your exports are larger than that, your net exports increase. And again, the aggregate demand curve would shift to the right. Now, while we can also he see here that there is leftward shifts of the aggregate demand curve. And again, there are five key drivers of this that we summarize in four key points. So the possible drivers in this case are the same as what would shift it rightwards, but we'll look at them slightly differently now. So what we'll see again is consumption comes up first, the spending on goods and services by households, and for a leftward shift of aggregate demand, this would mean that consumption has decreased. So why would this be the case? Well, it might be that uh, consumers are saving for the future, maybe sentiment has dropped, maybe people aren't as confident about the future, and have increased their savings rates, in which case they would be spending less. Maybe their sentiment has dropped, maybe uh, people are starting to lose their jobs, maybe there's a recession on the horizon, in which case again consumption may drop in this case, shifting AD to the left. Investment coming from the firms may also decrease and shift the AD curve to the left. And again, there's a number of reasons for this. We mentioned research and development before, so maybe companies are decreasing research and development expenditure because their profit level is dropping, uh, maybe due to recession and so on. There are a couple of other reasons, for example, looking at it from a tax perspective, maybe taxes on their profits, corporation tax has increased, in which case there would be left, less money left over to invest, maybe business sentiment has dropped, maybe they're not as confident about future demand conditions. Again, companies may scale back on investment, in this case, shifting the AD curve to the left. We also have the government here, and if government spending were to decrease, perhaps due to the case that they have accumulated too much debt over time, and if a government has a debt overhang, they may be somewhat restricted in terms of their spending. So they may not be able to borrow quite as much in that case if, they're, if they have extended their credit lines, if they have extended their borrowing on the international bond markets. So again, government spending may drop in this case. And the final reason then would be a decrease in these net exports here, which again are made up of exports and imports. In this case, a country may become less competitive. Maybe, for example, the inflation rate has gone up in that country and wage levels have gone up as well. In that case, their imports may look substantially larger than their exports, so their imports are increasing to a greater degree than exports. And again, this would cause the aggregate demand curve to shift to the left with less spending on goods and services. So to summarize, we have a range of different factors that cause the aggregate demand curve to shift left and right. And this depends on how they are affecting these consumption, investment, government, and net export components of AD. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.